I would love to talk about uh, traps of sh uh, Satan, Shaitan, for the new Muslims. What are the traps of Satan for new Muslims? First of all, to begin with, in majority of the cases, a person comes to Islam because they have investigated, they have researched, maybe they come from another religion after they realize that the other religion may not have all the truth, may have some of the truth, but not all the truth. They come to Islam, they research, they realize this is the only true religion with the holy book or un untouched, untampered, reserved, preserved all the way from the time of Prophet Muhammad. The person comes to Islam with open heart, excited to embrace this religion. They embrace it, they know this is the religion they want to live the rest of their life practicing. So what happened? Why is it that some of the people leave Islam? Let's take a look. There are many elements that causes a Muslim to leave Islam. The first things we have to realize, our mind, our heart is one thing. We also have elements called Satan. Satan does not want people to believe in Allah, in the one and only one God. He wants to stray us away from the religion. So what does he do? He affects our feeling. He affects our way of thinking. And some of the things includes, as I'm going to tell you now, for example, the media all around is against Islam, anti-Islam. So if we listen over and over and over again, and we are not with the community of Muslims, if we are not reading, we are not practicing enough, then we are out to be weakened. The other thing is our family. We become Muslims, our family are attacking us, ridiculing us, they're putting us down, they do all of this. This may be, oh, I'm just fed up, you know, I'm just going to leave Islam to just have peace with my family. Or my wife is going to leave me, my husband is going to leave me, my children are going to leave me. It's basically family and society pressure. I met a man, a very strong Muslim, American, who he just that Islam was his life. He had no intention of leaving it, but he worked for a very large company. He said, I will not tell him I'm Muslim because I don't want to be hassled. He was concerned to be hassled, to be bothered by it. So all these elements exist. It's like you're flowing, <clears throat> excuse me, you're flowing against the current that is against God, against Islam, against belief. How are you going to survive in this current? How are you going to be strong enough to not get swept away by this current? My advice is simple. The first thing is you have to learn and understand the book of Allah, the Quran. The more you understand, the more you learn, the more you understand how the Creator is communicating with us, the more you realize that this is the only true message. You learn it, you put it, Practice. You have to know prophetic, prophetic teachings, sunnah, that adds a second step to your strength. You have to live among the community of Muslims. A person that Rasulullah, peace be upon him, said, a person, a Muslim who lives alone is like a sheep that strays away from the flock and the wolf catches it and eats it. So you have to be among the community of Muslims that practice. Take friends that encourage you be closer to Allah rather than inviting you to go to the parties, listen to music, and do things that is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And lastly, relationship between you, you and Allah is between you and Allah. Nobody else can force you, push you, take you away, push you into it, push you out of it, except you yourself. Who would we surrender? Do we surrender to Allah, the Lord of the world, or do we surrender to society pressure, to the temptation to say no? Naturally, you know the answer. I hope this talk will strengthen you and help you become stronger and also help others who want to be strong in the religion. Thank you very much for listening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa